Today, I'm gonna to be tackling something that I've never done before. That is drum brakes on my 1995 GMC Suburban. I did what everyone else would do. I went on YouTube and I watched probably a good hour over the course of the last couple days of straight just footage of people doing the same thing. So now I feel like I do have a pretty good understanding about drum brakes. The one thing that was scaring me was all those springs. Just had no idea once I took them off how to put them back on the same way. But of course, I have plenty of pictures online. I can look at the other side of my truck that's not done yet. And I have my Chilton manual. I am completely set up with all of the parts and tools and lighting and everything that I think I'm gonna need. Last thing I'm gonna say before we get started, I am not a professional mechanic. I really just kind of figure it out as I go. That being said, this video is for entertainment purposes only. Please do not do what I am doing. Do not follow what I say. What I'm doing could lead to property damage, injury, or even death, or all three of those combined. I'll also be using protection, eye protection, and also lung protection. All right, let's get started. All right, guys, I have my mask on, so I apologize for the sound of my voice. First step, remove the lug nut cover. With that cover removed, the lug nuts are revealed. Make sure your vehicle is fully supported on jack stands, and for safety, never rely on a jack. Always make sure your vehicle is fully supported on jack stands. So not only is this the first time that I'm gonna be working on drum brakes, it's also the first time I've ever used an air impact wrench. I bought this thing, it's the Earthquake XT Stubby from Harbor Freight, of course. Just used it to take off a few lug nuts, and it seems to work just fine. And just to make sure that I got the right size drums, I went ahead and put them on the studs face to face, and you can see they are exactly the same. The next step is obviously going to be to remove the actual drum. And I just want to remind you guys of my vehicle here. This vehicle is a 1995 GMC Suburban. It only has 75,000 original miles. So I am curious because I don't think these have ever been changed what the condition is once I take this drum off. Okay, so just wiggling it around seems promising. Oh, look at that. Oh, One-handed. Wow, guys. There's the original drum on the inside and there's not even a ridge built up in there. I probably didn't even need new drums, but what the heck, I got them anyway. Here are my original shoes. They don't look too bad to me. That's interesting. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below if these are in definite need of replacement or if you think I could have rocked these for a little while longer. The reason why I chose to replace these is because I felt like they weren't really working whatsoever. They started to squeak pretty bad about a year ago. I ended up replacing the front brakes only because that's all I had time for at the time. I always suspected that these were metal to metal, which is definitely not the case. This pad seems to be a lot less worn down than this pad. That might be normal, I'm not sure. But in any case, everything looks great in here. The one thing I do see is this is leaking a little bit, but it doesn't look like much. I do have a new one of these things to put in. There you go, guys. That's a 75,000 mile original equipment drum brake right there. Next step is going to be to remove all of the springs. This is the part I was worried about. I just wasn't sure once I took them off and then when I was putting them back together, if I would remember exactly how they went. But of course, I took tons of pictures with my cell phone, so I should be able to put them back together just fine. My tool of choice is going to be a pair of vice grips. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby. Just pull that one off. First spring off. Okay, time for the next spring, which I guess is going to be this guy here. Okay, pull. Oh yes. One more time. Oh yeah. Okay, take the vice grips off. You can see that one loops in there, just comes right out. Now I have the drum, the box that the drum came in. I'm gonna sort of lay these springs out because there's an indentation from the circle of the drum. So I'm gonna lay these springs out kind of the way they are there, just to kind of give myself a reminder of which ones went to where. Come on, there we go. 
All right, there's a spring here, which I'm just going to see if I can. Oh. Yep, that did it. There it is. Well, this thing in here, it looks like it just slides right out. So I'll just go ahead and take that out now. I'm thinking this little spring should just slide right out. Got that one out. Now these, uh, these have a sort of push in and twist mentality to them. And there's a pin that goes all the way through. Hopefully you can see that. So I'm guessing you just kind of push in and twist on those. Okay, so I was able to just do that with my fingers and then you pull the pin out the back. Here you can see how these guys are set up. You just push in and you twist that little locking mechanism just so it lines up and then the spring slides right off. Wasn't able to get this one with my fingers so I'll just use a pair of pliers and just push in and twist here. There we go. All right. All right, so if you look down here, I have this, uh, I believe this goes to the parking brake. So it's just a parking brake lever that I believe I'm going to have to reuse. So I was trying to figure out how to get this off, but I realized why don't I just leave it on? So I'm going to see if I can just leave this thing on. And uh, I know some of you guys are going, duh, but you know, this is my first time guys. Give me a break. All right, we have everything apart. And for me, the next step is going to be to replace this wheel cylinder. I did pick up a new one and this is from Napa. And I'm gonna go ahead and swap this thing out. This nut right back here on the brake line that is 14 millimeter. I'm gonna go ahead and put my wrench on there. And loosen her up. You might wanna put a rag under there just to catch some of that. Very tight fit. All right, so this is loose. I just went ahead and used a pair of pliers to get that off the rest of the way quickly. Now, uh, next step is to get these bolts here. And I've already pre-loosened them. They came off fairly easily. I told you this truck doesn't have much corrosion because it's uh, definitely a lightly used vehicle and there goes the old one great okay so this new uh, cylinder has a plug in it that i'm going to just pop out and i'll go ahead and get started the can get this thing into place here okay that seems pretty good and i'll go ahead and get my brake line started Actually, I'll start it beforehand so I'm not putting any pressure on anything and possibly cross-threading something. Okay, it's definitely not cross-threaded, so it's still dripping. I'm going to go ahead and take my pair of pliers here. Just tighten her down. Get on there, baby. Okay, if any of you guys have ever wondered what's inside of a wheel cylinder, you have this rubber boot here. Once that rubber boot comes off, you have your plunger, I guess you'd call it. You have a plastic piece there and then a spring. Once the spring comes out, that's it. It's just a, a fluid reservoir, basically. One thing I did notice while doing my research is there's contact points here um, where the shoes actually rub against this backing plate. And uh, I noticed people lubing it up. I saw one guy put this uh, 
antices on there, and I thought the antices was a good idea, so I'm doing the same thing. Next is the fun part, or the most difficult part, however you want to look at it putting this thing back together. I do want to point out here, these, there's pins here that are in this uh, wheel cylinder. These came out of the old one. You're going to want to make sure you keep those and hang on to them because my new one did not come with those. So I just cleaned them up with a rag. They look like new and I just pressed them in, I guess, where they're supposed to go. And uh, I don't know exactly, I can't remember exactly what hooks onto those, but I'm sure something does. Okay guys, so what I did to start the assembly is I put my shoes on the ground, I put in my adjustment pin, and I also threw in this spring. And also to make sure that you're doing this correct, the correct way, you can tell that this pad on this uh, front pad doesn't go all the way to the top of the, of the metal. So that means this pad faces the front of the vehicle, and this pad where the pad goes all the way and, and faces the entire surface of the metal here goes towards the rear of the vehicle. I have put uh, together this adjustment pin, this spring, and also this spring here. That was my last step I just did, and the reason why I did that was really, um, I don't know, maybe that is the next step, but just to hold this side in place, because the problem I keep having is this whole thing wants to fall down. So I don't know of another way to get these things to stay in place other than to just start putting parts on. This is that pin that goes basically through the entire, uh, you know, brake pad and then also through the back of this backing plate. And uh, I just used my pliers to push that on and twist it to lock it in. Okay, the next two pieces I'm going to be using are this uh, washer that's a spring type washer and also this retaining clip. On the back of that parking brake lever, I should say on the front of the parking brake lever behind the shoe, I'm going to slide the, uh, the spring washer on. Okay, that's on there. Then I'm going to slide the actual pin through there. And then I have this retaining clip that I am going to slide on using a screwdriver. There we go, that was easy. Ugh, man. All right guys, look, I'm gonna be honest with you. I think I said in the beginning of all this that I was not a professional, and that is definitely true. This is the first time I've ever done rear drum brakes, and I'm gonna be honest, I failed. Uh, I just finished with the last of the two, and I'm not kidding you, it's probably taken me six, seven, eight hours, I don't even know, all day long to get these things done. And I don't know why, I mean, it's a bunch of springs, but I, I mean, I would have to go back and refer to videos on YouTube, which by the, by the way, I, watched, um, let's see, uh, 1A Auto, Chris Fix, uh, Eric the Car Guy, <laughs> you know, guys like that, uh, just to try to get this done and see where the certain springs go and which holes they go into and all this stuff. It's not a super difficult process. It's not, I, I, I admit that, but it's just meticulous. And then you have certain springs that you cannot get on for the life of you until you figure out like a little trick. So, uh, it has been an absolute nightmare. Um, I hope I never, ever have to do this again. Uh, if I didn't love this 95 Suburban so much, I would sell it just because of the drum brakes. Um, they are ridiculous. Uh, the guy who invented drum brakes, I hope he got fired um, because these are the most ridiculous type of brakes I've ever dealt with in my life. Um, so if any of you guys came to this channel because you were, or this video, because you were looking to have a how-to video on drum brakes, I am sorry, man. I just, I'm being honest. I 
I failed. This is uh, a failure of a video. I got the brakes done, but I just mean the video itself. It was supposed to be a step-by-step, -step, you know, how to do it, where to put the springs, but I'll show you the after, now that it's done, all the springs are on, but uh, the video is horrible. So I apologize for that. Uh, usually my videos aren't this bad. I try to have a high quality type of video, how to's and you know, stuff like that. So um, anyways, I'm just turning this around into like a vlog style video because I, I, I had to shut the camera off. I had to turn off my lab. I had to take all my equipment away from me because I was cussing and you know, Lord forgive me. It was, it was bad. It was bad. So, um, gosh. I really, I really, really did not enjoy that and I seriously hope that I never have to do that again. Here is the finished uh, passenger side and I'll get up close so you can see all of the springs and the placements, maybe where they go. I don't know if some of you guys might be wondering which springs go where. So I'm just going to show you. So that's it guys, that is the uh, passenger side rear drum brake. So the next step for me is to take a wire brush and clean off the, the mating surface here. Um, there's a little bit of surface rust there. I'm just gonna clean that off and then I'll paint it up with anti-seize. So when the new uh, drum goes on there, there's, it's never gonna actually seize on there. I've seen a bunch of videos like the 1A Auto video, the guy's beating the living heck out of it with a sledgehammer like this, you know? So I, I grabbed mine because I thought I was gonna have the same problem, but mine just came right off with one hand. So um, I don't know if these were even, should have been changed. Maybe I was having a different problem. Maybe it was simply the uh, wheel cylinders because I didn't think that I had very, much rear braking, if at all any. Um, I'm also gonna do the front brakes, but I suspected that I had a rear brake problem for a long time now. And I, you know what? Just so I never ever have to do it again, I decided when I got in there, I looked at everything, it looked fine, but I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and replace it all so I don't have to worry about it ever again, hopefully for the entire rest of the time that I own this truck.